Hey, welcome to Visual Arts, Jefferson County High School. I am Mr. Nicely, and what we're going to do today is to continue with what we have been working on. So yesterday in class, we created this little chart and worked on several things. One was different textures. We had a smooth blending, hatching, and cross-hatching, and stippling. Then we did one down here where we mixed them together. So the next assignment that we're doing today um, has to do with keeping these and also the value. We had a contrast in the light and dark and we had a very smooth fade and using these to create some forms. So if you look at these, these are just the basic shapes. Circle, square and triangle. We're going to get more into later forms and the idea of creating space on a flat surface, but with a circle, among other things, you can use just simple contour lines that will show um, that it's a form or a sphere. With a square, you can make it into a cube. You can also have a cube that looks like this, where you've seen it from a corner. And that's the kind we're going to use today. So it's just taking this picture and flipping it around to see from the corner. Looks a little more realistic. With a triangle, you can either curve the bottom and make it into a cone, or not a really good top there. You can make an angle at the bottom and add another corner and you've got a pyramid. So from the basic shapes you come up with these forms. Now we're going to use these forms to create a page kind of like this. And we're going to work on overlapping and kind of arranging things then what we're going to do is use these to make it look like there's light hitting it and that these are textured objects. So we'll go ahead and get started. So you notice here that you've got circles that will become spheres until you add something like the contour lines that I just did or shading. They're just going to look like circles. With the triangle, you see I've got the pyramids. I've got two of those, two cones. And I've also got two cubes that come from the squares. So I kind of marked this next one so I can make sure I get the, the same view. I want to show you how I drew these to get the overlapping. Um, what you'll need is a regular pencil. You'll also need a ruler. This is in your kit. The one you have is a little shorter and a little skinnier, but these are in your kit. So if you haven't picked these up, remember these are in the main office. Um, along with the uh, paper, you'll need this. This is 9 by 12 blank drawing paper. There will always be a stack up there. What I would do is just take it 6 or 7 every time you're here. That way you've got a little stack at home. Any specialty paper I'll have there too uh, as we need it. You'll need an ebony pencil and also some erasers. The one on the end of your pencil as well as the eraser that's in your kit. And that should be everything you need for today. All right, so the way I started with this one is I started with the cube. And the way that I drew that is I started with the straight line. Now I'm going to go kind of quick, but remember you can pause this anytime that you need to. So it can be totally at your pace. And I'm also going to draw darker because it has to show up on the screen. You see there, you now you can see that line. Um, that's the corner of the cube right here. Now the next thing I want to do is to draw just up a ways. Don't know exactly how much I'll need. And I want to keep these lines parallel. So if you're using the ruler from class, you can look, if you line up one, you can look at the other one. It may be a little further down like this, but you can keep it the same angle. And then I want to make these at a slight angle too. So you end up with something like this. 
And then I want to figure out how far back I want each side to go. Again, parallel. I'm parallel through the ruler here, so the back is not leaning. And I want to do the same thing here. Come back here and draw a line. Now I've drawn a little more than I need because I can erase it out really easily, especially if you're keeping your pencil lines really light. Now the next two lines will show the top. Here, What you want to do is draw from this corner, but you want to make sure that your ruler is parallel with the red lines as you see through here. This will work with other kinds of rulers. It's just easier with this one. Again, lining up here, and I want to make sure that the ruler is straight. So if I put my pencil there, it's easy to make sure I stay there. And I can look at the line right here and get that lined up. Okay. Now the next thing I had was a circle that's overlapping. It's in front. So notice I drew that whole cube. To me, it's easier to draw the entire thing and then just erase out what you don't need. For example, um, the circle that I drew, I used a compass like this. If you have this compass, you can use it. Um, if you have one, you most likely know how to use it. That one's not in your kit. You can use a regular compass or you can just do your best job your circle, maybe a little bit of an oval, or you can just draw around something, find a lid or something that's the right size. Now this part will be easier for you because your lines are lighter, but what I'm going to do as I go is just erase it out. Since the sphere is going to be in front of the cube, I just have to erase out the part of the cube that doesn't show anymore. So instead of guessing at it, I just go ahead and draw the whole thing. Now, when I erase that part out, the cube is behind the circle that will be the sphere. Same thing as I draw a triangle. Um, let's see, in my original I had that bigger, so let me change my triangle just a little bit. Um, I'm going to start with, or excuse me, I was saying triangle, I meant a pyramid. So I'm going to start with my line here, and I want it, the corner to be behind the sphere, but I want it to be in front of the cube. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the whole thing. So I've drawn those two lines. Then I'm going to get a middle line that comes down. And these bottom lines, if you want an easy way to make it all look kind of the same or look like it belongs together, is make sure that it's parallel to what your cube is. It makes a good uh, guideline for everything else. And then this one, you're just kind of matching that angle because it's the same angle as back there. Then when I erase out the corner of the pyramid, I've got it in front of the sphere, but it's also, or behind the sphere, excuse me, it's also in front of the cube, which means I have to erase out that part of the cube. So as I go, I draw the whole thing, and then I figure out what needs to go, what I have to get rid of for it to look right. So the next thing I want to put is this cone. And so the cone, remember, starts out with the top two lines. Oops. Top two lines of the triangle. Then you just round off the bottom. Now, you can just draw it like this. To me, it's easier because your hand kind of works as a natural compass. If I'm going to draw that, I'll just turn it upside down a second and then just go from corner to corner. And for me, it's a lot easier to get that curve. Now, see if you can before I erase. See if you can tell what you need to erase here to make that cone look like it's in the front. Yep. So we take that out. Then what I'm going to do is just gradually add more. I have to switch to this to fit into the... Uh, a little too big. To fit into the 
compass. Let's try that. I think that'll look a little better. Yeah. And I'm just following the same instructions. Yours doesn't have to look exactly like this. If you've kind of got the hang of what we're doing, go ahead and draw it out, make some changes. As long as you have two of each one, then you're okay. If you need to, just pause this as you go along, put things right where I'm putting it, and that'll make it a little bit easier as we get started. So we're going to work on why the cubes and so forth are made, why they look like this, why the lines angle back. Again, I'm matching these angles to the first cube. and work on something called linear perspective later on. But for now we're just going to do this because our main goal is not the perspective, it's just to get something to practice with the um, shading. Okay, so the bottom of the cone comes out. And again, since I'm moving quickly, just pause as you need to. Oops. Um, I was taking a shortcut. I shouldn't have done that. So I'm going to draw the whole pyramid. Then draw in the bottom. And you could draw in this line, but you're going to erase it all anyway. So I would just leave it out. It's a little bit less to erase. And the bottom is there. So what you have is something that looks like this. So before we get any further, make sure that you pause this, work on this. This should be in light pencil. You should have two pyramids, two cones, two what will be spheres, and two cubes. You should have overlapping, and it should be big enough to take up most of the page. As soon as you get that, again it can be in this order or your own, then unpause it and we're going to move on and start doing um, the shading. So what we want with this is to use the blending, hatching, cross-hatching, and stippling. And we can also mix on this one. You don't have to make it just this or just that. You can mix them up some. And we want to try to replace with these textures and values all these outlines. One of the things we talked about in a previous assignment was using shared edges. We're going to use a lot of that to try to get rid of the actual outlines, the contours. So I'm just going to kind of find a place to start. Um, this horrible noise is my pencil sharpener. And um, let me start in the middle with the cube. So I'm going to do that and I want to start with blending because I think it'll make it um, a little easier for beginners. And before I do anything, I have to decide where's the light coming from. There's a lot of subtlety with lighting, cast shadows, um, there's highlights coming from the table, reflections. We're not going to worry about all that. All we're going to do is say the light's coming from a direction. And you don't have to draw this arrow in, but I'm just going to say that's where my light source is. So that my light bulb. Um, everything will be light on this side, darker on that. So we're going to have to generalize a few things. For example, if the light's hitting these two, then either one of them could be the lighter one. So what I'm going to do is just decide I have to have a light, medium, and dark. I'm going to make the top the lightest, this medium, and this dark. And so um, I'm going to lighten these. Since yours are already light, um, they'll either blend in or you can erase them as we go. But I'm trying to get mine kind of back to where yours were. Yours are probably about that light, hopefully. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and put in just a light coating of pencil. I'm using that cir uh, circle that we used on this lesson. 
and I'm also turning it, trying to keep it in that side. Now notice you don't really need a line here. Even though we haven't made that dark yet, you can see the difference because of the contrast. So this is a shared edge because of the contrast in value, kind of a light gray versus white. This side is going to be a little darker. So again, let me get these lines lighter like yours will be. And if I go around those, what happens is you start to see the top of the cone and the edge of this sphere, not because of the outline anymore, but because of the shading. Now I don't want to get this too dark because I still have to make that side darker. And notice how I turn it so that it's a good angle for my hand. I slow down when I get to an edge. And you can see it's starting to take shape. As the outlines disappear, it looks more and more realistic. If you stick with this and really pause and try on this one and follow the directions, you're going to be pretty pleased with this. Some of you may have already drawn like this, and this may be more review. Some of you, this may be the first time you've done this. So the light drawing at first will really help. Notice right here, I'm real careful around that edge. So I've just eliminated a little more outline. little bit on that pyramid and this I get a little glare on this so I have to tilt it up but you can see that I have now a cube it looks like the light is coming from this upper right source it hits on top so that's kind of a medium gray or a light gray a medium gray and a dark gray so I'm gonna do a little more and then I'm gonna do some pause so you can kind of see it develop as it goes um, I don't want the video to get too awfully long but um, you could do the same thing down here with hatching lines. And each side, if you're doing hatching, can be a different direction as long as on that side they're all the same direction. But remember, we can mix things up now. So if I wanted to create a little cross hatching to make this cube look rougher, like the texture of it would feel rougher than this smooth one. I could do that. I could also kind of invent things. This is kind of cross hatching and it's sort of a scribble, not one of those four that we worked on. If it starts to look like it's kind of falling apart too much, I need it to be a little more together. I can add some blending on that. So what I get is a textured cube but it still has the lights and darks I could even include a little stippling if I wanted to give it a little bit rougher look to it and darken it even more the top really doesn't need any more but I might put just a few lines just to show that it's textured too now I want to show you the up here I want to do these uh, curved surfaces um, need to sharpen again. The, uh, the sphere, it would be down in this hole kind of, and there's going to be all kinds of cast shadows on here in reality. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to kind of leave them out for now. But on the sphere, you're going to have a highlight. So if the light's hitting here, the highlight's going to be about right here. And so that's the area I kind of protect. And what I'm doing is I'm using that blending technique I could also use any of the other techniques on it, but I may add some on top of this. And first thing I do, this is kind of like how we did the chart yesterday, or the value scale. Everything's kind of light gray. Then what I'm going to do is back off of this little by little. And as I build it up, I'm thinking crescent moon. So instead of going straight across, because that would flatten it, that would turn it back into a circle. What you want to do is to go around it and kind of come into the point of the crescent moon there. It's a little fatter on this side because it's darker down there. Then I'll fade that into the rest. I 
Notice how it's really working well with that edge. I wish I had a zoom. This camera is new and hopefully I'll be doing Teams meetings soon. I have to kind of figure out how all that works. But um, it's very, it's better than my old camera. It has audio, which is good. And it's better quality, it gets a better picture, but it doesn't zoom. Um, so I'm just building this up. Notice I'm always going around it instead of across it. Now, if I wanted that to stay smooth, I could leave it like that. But I could also begin to add, let's say if I wanted some hatching lines, like maybe there's some grooves carved in this ball. Instead of going straight across again, I want to keep around it. So I could put some curved lines. And they're showing the form, but they're also adding to the shading. So I could put more lines down in this area, put fewer lines up here. And it starts to have more of a rounded feel. I could also do cross hatching again. I could curve this direction. Concentrate, putting more lines where it's dark fewer lines where it's lighter. And it really starts to shape up. Now, uh, this, before I finish these up kind of quick, I want to show you one on a curved surface like this. Sometimes people are going to want to make it dark to light, top to bottom. But what happens is, since the light's coming from the side, you're going to have a darker side and a lighter side. So I'm going to go ahead and lighten this line. I don't have to worry about the other one because it's going to be in a shadow anyway. And I'm going to turn it this direction. And I want to start, actually I'm going to turn it this way because that's how I did that line. If I wanted to do this with hatching lines, this would be a lot like how we did the value scale with hatching. I'm putting lines around it, but they're matching the bottom instead of straight across. I'm just going to start with curved lines. And then since the left side over here, when I turn it back correctly, it's the left side, will be darker. I'm just putting a concentration of darker lines there. Then just building that up, I might come this direction. So I just put shorter lines, but more of them on one side. And you can see that just by itself, it really starts to show that cone. Okay. Um, but I could also add some shading or some blending to it to smooth it out just a little bit. So I get both. So you can mix and match these really any way that you want. That's what I'll look for when I grade these. Is I'm not looking that you have one that's tippling, one that's cross-hatching. We've already done that. We did this on this assignment, broke them apart. What I'm looking for is that you have um, a good contrast of light and dark. You have a definite light source. And again, we're keeping it simple. No cast shadows, unless you just know how to do that already. Um, and then you've kind of mixed it up and things don't look all smooth or all rough. You've done some different things. Now if you notice right here, it's kind of hard to do these lines curved and think about that and um, keep it neat and right on that line. So here is a little tip. If you want to add to your art kit, just an inexpensive pack of post-it notes. These are really good to use because this is going to be my darkest side. Um, and I want to make this one really rough. I want to try to use um, some cross hatching, maybe some stippling in there. So what I want to do is take a couple of post-its and line up those sides. Post-its work really well because they, they stay down in place and they're easy to remove and you can you can use them multiple times. Um, when I get to the bottom, let me go ahead and add one down there. Sometimes I'll move it around, sometimes I'll just use several. And you can sort of stick these back together and 
like I said, use them again. I've got one up here that I was using in class yesterday. And since this is going to be the darkest side, uh, one hint here is you want to try to go from the posted in. Otherwise, sometimes you'll catch it and pull it up. But if it's stuck down well enough, you can go both. But I can get a good dark texture. I can mix some stippling in there. There's no fade on this because this is one that has an abrupt change. It has corners like a cube. So I'm putting all this stuff in here. And I don't have to worry. I can do all the texture I want, and none of those edges are protected. Then when you take it off, you've got an almost perfect edge. Just like that. Now here I missed just a little bit. So you know, I can do some finishing up without them. On this side, you could do the same thing. Um, you're kind of protected anyway because you've got dark on a lot of the sides, but one down at the bottom would help. And you have only two sides showing, so you're just going to need a darker and a lighter. You don't have to do the light, medium, and dark. So you begin to kind of figure out how all this works together. Oops. Now this bottom, see I still have a line. What I would do to finish that up is take that out put the post-it note there and so I don't have that outline either because remember we're trying to eliminate all the outlines and use value and texture to replace it with shared edges so I don't have any outlines now look how much these look pretty good by themselves but look how these look over here there's no outlines the shading is there and you can continue on with these so let me finish those real quick. I'll pause this and then I'll show you the finished version. Okay, so we're back. I got everything finished. I tried to even up to where my darks. I didn't have one that was super dark. And the rest, um, where the darkest parts were, were a little bit lighter. So I had some consistency. Um, I also used my eraser as a drawing tool and cleaned up some edges. I added a little highlight on the sphere. And when I'm looking at it, I think I've pretty much eliminated any outlines. Then you can take your big eraser, kind of clean it up a little bit. And that has everything I would be looking for. So this may be a little shaky. I want to bring this down so you can see it closer. But what you have here in art terms are the illusion of form created with different textures. And you've got a good contrast of value so that your light source is revealed. And you've eliminated outlines or actual lines, except for the ones in texture. And you've replaced them with shared edges. You've also created overlapping, which is actually talking about the idea of space the Elmo space which we haven't quite gotten to yet so you've really done a lot here you have put together everything we've done so far and yesterday was important we wanted to make sure that you got these so you understood it and could do all the techniques and skills but much more interesting to do something like this and remember if you can do basic forms like this everything else that's more interesting things that you want to draw are just based on this so you can find things the face has basic forms cars buildings they're all made out of these forms and so it just becomes a little more advanced a little more complex but um, the ideas remain the same all right so that's the lesson for um, forms and texture you can find that on canvas you got all the information, which I guess you probably already have if you're watching this video. And I'll see you on the next video.